What is going on, Wolfpack Nation? Welcome once again to the Tuffy Talk Live Show, y'all. This is going to be a huge banger, y'all. As we are dancing, baby. The Pack Nine is in the tournament. Pew, pew, pew. Let's go. We're so excited here today. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. Let's go. Play. Yeah, there let's, you go. Right, let's go. Let's do it. Hey, oh, hey, I, I got I got my NC State shirt, and underneath it, I got my Oma um, um, Wolves shirt. There we go. So there we go. One. So, so we got <laughs> we got all the feels here today. So we're so excited to get this thing rolling here. Talk about start to break down, discuss, you know, what to expect, you know, what Pac Nine needs to do, our predictions, things like that. And we would love for all of you to join us here on the discussion and give us your own th- thoughts and predictions as well. So make sure in the comments, send us your thoughts, send us your predictions, send us your questions, whatever you got, send it to us, and we will get to it here today, guaranteed. But I, I, I will be honest to say that. I know for myself, I didn't play a lot of uh, baseball. It wasn't necessarily around it that much either. And, I mean, you know, I know for Greg and Michael, I think I speak for all of us, that we need that little bit of insider touch. And uh, I know for, for myself, uh, you know, that that I, I, I was lucky enough to be with Greg at a lot of the uh, pregame tailgates uh, for the Pac-9 games. And one guy that always stood out that I always seemed to know his stuff is somebody that I think, uh, Greg, if you wouldn't mind introducing our special guest, and we will get to it. Yeah, you know, we, we we don't always get to have baseball players, right, because we have to go through all the hoops to get them. But uh, all you got to know is know somebody to get a player a player's parent. So that's what we did today. We got number 31, but number one in our hearts, when Scott's dad, Mr. Mark Scott, let's go. Awesome. <laughs> right. Hey, thanks for having me. Most places have a green room. I was waiting in your red room. The snacks and drinks are great. Yeah. <laughs> good to hear. Good to hear. You know, we, we, we pay extra for that, you know, so yeah. uh, so that's good to know they're treating you right. No, nah, thank you, Mr. Scott. I really do appreciate you joining us here today and definitely hoping you can help give us a little bit more insight to our followers in terms of, uh, you know, maybe what are some opportunities for the state, uh, for the state players this weekend, uh, you know, maybe what are some of the challenges that maybe we're not even seeing as well for this weekend. But, but I, I'll get right to it again. I mean, just to kind of recap once again, so you got – South Carolina is the host as the 15, uh, 15 seed, correct? Yep. 15th uh, national then, seed, yep. 15th national seed. And then uh, you have uh, Campbell as the number two seed. State is the three seed. And then Central Connecticut State University huh. as the four seed. Yeah, that's – that's try and say I, that. I, I don't know how stuff. such a small st- state has a central. <laughs> I know, right? There's a, cen- there's a center of Connecticut. I agree. I 100% agree. Um but uh, so first of all, also to want to actually take a quick pause right as well. And, and remember all those again, we're celebrating Memorial Day today. So celebrating all the all of our men and women that we have lost. Uh, we thank you for everybody for uh, their, their sacrifices, all the family and friends that have been touched. So I want to give a quick uh, shout out to that before we uh, move into this. Thank you, Michelle, for that reminder. Uh, but thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Really, I'm excited here. So so Mr. Scott, tell us first and foremost, what were your thoughts when you saw uh, I mean, first of all, how excited were you? I mean, were you nervous a little bit about state getting in or, or were you pretty confident? Yeah, taking a cue from you, I must first also thank our uh, veterans and those who passed. I missed the first two minutes of the selection show because I was visiting my dad, who's a veteran at a nursing home in Salisbury. Um, so thank you to all the veterans. And we especially remember those who paid the ultimate price today. But mm-hmm. to get to your question, Leighton, uh, I think Greg knows that I was not nervous he Until wasn't. we got down to about three regionals, I'm like, you know, leading up to it, it's like, hey, you know, RPI is not the end all be all. But if you're one of the top 25, let's say that they're wrong by 10 slots and we're only number 35, you still got to have 30 teams to pass us through either automatic bids or at large. So I felt very comfortable until there are only about three regions left. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and so so kind of give it to us. What was your reaction when you saw the slate with Campbell and uh, South Carolina and Central Connecticut State? Were were you excited? I mean, to me, it seems like it's definitely challenging. I mean, I know for me, uh, you know, being a partial South Carolina fan since my wife went there, it's it's that's interesting. But also too, I mean, seeing Campbell on the board was like ooh, because I mean, all state fans were. Everybody was saying, yeah, no, Campbell definitely got screwed out of uh, not hosting uh, a regional for sure. And, uh, you know, seeing the, the the pictures of, uh, you know, one guy wearing like a Spartan hat, uh, you know, helmet. <laughs> they're ready to go to war. All that. Yeah. Like they're ready for a war. And and the first opportunity they have to go to war is against us uh, on, on Friday at 1 p.m. So a definite challenge. But I think it's there's a lot of 
local bragging right interest there for sure. Yeah, I uh, like most people, you know, that first split second, just relief, jubilation, uh, exhilaration from seeing that name on the board. Um, and then, you know, the next mode, the competitive mode kicks in. It's like, all right, what have we got? And like you said, uh, Campbell is very tough. Not only do they have a chip on their shoulder from not being a host site, uh, but they're a very, very good team. And a lot of people are looking at how USC uh, faltered down the stretch, but I believe they were 26 and seven at home. Uh, I looked, they only lost two games all year to teams that did not make the field and they won 11 games against teams that made the field. So we can't overlook them. And then of course, we don't know anything, or I don't know anything about Central Connecticut State, but who knows? They could be a team like a, a UNCW or somebody that's a little further down there that can beat anybody on any given day. So uh, it, it will be interesting. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, and I do want to go ahead and, too, and uh, kind of bring up a little bit of a cheat sheet here that we can use as we kind of break this down a little bit here. But, but Michael, I know that you were going at it, uh, you know, over the last 48 hours talking about stats and uh, RPIs and strength of schedules and everything <laughs> like that. Uh, I mean, what kind of stood out to you here, uh, you know, when you kind of looked at, you know, the resumes here? Yeah, well, so just in general, the couple days leading up to it, just as I was, you know, all the bubble talk, just looking into it more. And the more I was looking at it, I mean, the better I felt, honestly, um, about our resume. Um and this morning I was like, I, yeah, I think we're, I think we're going to get in. Like even with the, there were three stolen bids on Sunday, which was a, a little, a little scary, but you know, the yeah. more I looked at it, you know, I mean, an RPI 23 was, I mean, it's way better than any of the, any of the bubble teams. You had 10 quad one wins, which, you know, some of the, some hosts had 10 quad one wins. Um, so I felt pretty confident after, after kind of just lo looking at everything. Um, but our draw, it, it's I like it. Um, but like you said, Campbell's going to have something to prove. USC, uh, they're always tough at home. Um, yeah. It's actually so the top three seeds combined is the lowest RPI out of any regional. Um, I think it's a combined mm -hmm. right. South Carolina's eighth, Campbell's thirteenth, and we're twenty third. So I think that's the lowest out of any of the top three seeds from any of the regionals. So I mean, it's definitely going to be tough, but. Um, I like it. Yeah. Well, and I do want to point out too that the the interesting thing is that 15 of the 16 regional hosts are in the top 16 RPI and Campbell was the only one who was Campbell 13th was the in the one. RPI yeah. that is not hosting and the one that wasn't in the top 16 was Auburn and they were 19th. Yeah. So very interesting for we'll, sure. We'll, we'll let all the uh, 10 hat people have their moment and uh, <laughs> let them uh you know, duke that out in a uh, a room full of antennas. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, at the end of the day, you got to go out and play ball games, right? Whether yeah. it's you know on your home field or 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 on the road, and um, you know from a state perspective, I I like the pressure of not playing at home. And you know, like state fans will travel. It's only you know depending on where you're coming from. Like it's gonna be six and a half hours for us, so we'll, we'll be there. But Raleigh uh, Raleigh area, you're talking what three four hours. I think something like that. Yep. Maybe. Yep. Yeah. So that's doable. Uh, Friday, Friday at one is not an ideal time slot. You know, maybe you wanted that, uh, that evening game to, you know, that way you don't have to take a full yeah. day at work, but Hey, yeah. if you, you want to Friday, be there, you'll find a way. You went on Friday, you play Saturday night. So that one should be actually, I don't think that's true. If I look, if I looked well, at the schedules, it looked like the winners played it? during the day and then the losers play at night. But oh. I, I, I may be we'll confused see. with that because I, I I've seen one I've seen so many darn, darn things I can't keep up with what is what but I, I believe the winners play the day and the losers play at night but again I could be wrong on that. Hey, then if we win, we have that much more rest than the team that wins at seven o'clock Friday. Yeah. So 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 yeah. So here's the schedule. So State plays Campbell at one p.m. on ACC Network. Uh, yeah. Game two, South Carolina versus Central Connecticut State at seven p.m. ESPN yeah. Plus, and then the losers play first at oh. noon. Oh. Okay. okay, and then the winners play at six p.m. All right, yeah. all right. I so, I read that wrong. Then I yeah. I, I own it. No, well, yeah, but hey, it, it, it's confusing. I get it. Not a problem. Hey, but now we know for sure. I'm, we're telling it to you like it is. I'm reading it directly off off the South Carolina internet page right here. So perfect. Uh, right from the 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 
the Gamecock's uh, mouth. Itself. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I want to get to a couple of comments here uh, real quick. I want to give a shout out here. So first of all, I got to give a shout out to Amanda B, our brand new member to the channel. Again, y'all, it's super, super cheap uh, here. You know, it, it, I think it's like 99 cents per month uh, <laughs> to join the channels. And and uh, obviously, you know, it's, it's just really to help support us. Again, we really do pride on trying to give – all of you in Wolfpack Nation, the best content possible. So if uh, if you have 99 cents a month to give, uh, you know, we really appreciate that support. And uh, thank you, Amanda B, for doing that. But I uh, also got Steam Squad here in the highs with all the Wolf Wolfpack chants here in the comments. Love it. Love it. Uh, got Wolfpack Crazy in here. We are in the tournament. <laughs> raised by the Wolves. Woo, go Pack. Love that. Um, and then uh, Michelle talking about how she's in a little bit of a bind, how she's a loyal <laughs> State fan, but she also graduated from Campbell's pharmacy school completely understand that so i'm i'm sure either way you're looking for a great tournament i think this is going to be a great regional it's going to be a lot of fun and uh uh so looking forward to that and then lastly uh justin cook says sup mark and everyone uh (laughs) and uh and then yeah uh, let's see uh also to uh seth saying heard a rumor that willis and highfield were injured any word on peyton green too uh i mean I haven't, I haven't heard anything heard like that. Yeah, I mean, I mean Scott, I'm, yeah, I mean, I want to put Pey- you on Pey- the Peyton, there, Peyton has yeah. had some dealing, some nagging issues. He had gotten hurt in that pit series and yep. tried to come back against uh, Duke, and then got pulled in that. So maybe another yep. week of uh, you know training yep. will get him get him right. But yep. Sam and Sam and Matt are good to go as far as I've heard. I mean, yep. Sam just pitched the other night, so I don't think he's really dealing with anything. Yeah. No, no, it, it, it maybe more prevented, maybe more preventative than anything. I wouldn't, I wouldn't read too much into that. But I mean, the one thing which I will say though, uh, I'm trying to find uh, who was it, uh, Matt Hevener, uh, man, he yep. he stepped up, man, a freshman who looked really good stepping in for Peyton Green. Uh, so I mean, you know, obviously Peyton Green's the experienced guy that that's played for us most of the whole season, but. I mean, you know, if, if Matt Heavener continues with what he's doing, if we can give him some reps, give him some at-bats, and, uh, you know, see what we have in him long-term, uh, you know, put him in a little bit of a pressure cooker, you know, and, uh, you know, see if there's something there that we can build off of, then so be it. So, uh, but, yeah. yeah. So For, uh, for me, it'll be interesting to see how we approach this. Obviously, you, you know, you're in the time where it's one game at a time, but you also – put all your chips in every game right because you don't want to yeah. you know you don't want to get in that loser's bracket and have to fight back especially mm-hmm. after that first no. game so it will be interesting to see who we throw out there um you know do you do you go with your normal friday starter do you go with someone that has more experience like a, a sam highfield or even um, matt willitson uh do you do you throw out logan um that that's for me is going to be the interesting um part of this because looking at campbell's lineup those boys can smash they yeah, got you, they got you, they got three dudes that have almost twenty home runs, sixty RBIs, and hitting over three twenty. And yeah. uh, um, they're they're no it. joke. You can see it right there. According to this, I don't, I don't know if this is accurate. It, this says there Campbell is first in the country in runs scored per game with almost ten per game. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. Home runs. So That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at there. Here's a stat too. Let's play a game. Do they have more? Let me see how I want to phrase this because this is going to be crazy. If I told you combined with doubles and triples or hit by pitch, what would you say? Well, I mean, uh, I would say doubles and triples, but I, I know Campbell's like leads the country in hit by pitch too. I think. Yeah, uh, I think it's 146 hit by pitches this year. Well, and, and the one thing which I do want to say, which one thing that really stands out to me, was more of the strength of schedule. Uh, you know, ours being 19th in the country, Campbell's being 91st. So, you know, that could be a benefit. I know that Campbell and the one time that we faced them, they beat us. Uh, so, you know, that definitely not this year. Oh no, They're not yeah, we played them this year. Last year, okay, That's so we good. have faced them. That's right. Yeah. Um, but. But still, I mean, so seeing 91st versus 19th for us, you almost say, okay, you know, maybe have we been a little bit more challenged? Are we a little bit more, you know, ready for this kind of stage? Because we've faced teams of, of you know, of strong caliber before, yeah. um, you know, so, so you know, that, that could be a benefit. And I'm sure probably, believe it or not, I mean, I, I and, and tell me, because I didn't really watch the post-selection show, you know, piece where they interviewed the, 
you know, committee chair and all that. Did they talk anything about why Campbell wasn't selected as a regional host? Because I'm sure that 91st strength of schedule has to do something with it. <laughs> they attempted to address it. And uh, if I didn't know any better, the Auburn AD did his best Heisman because he was giving them the stiff arm. Like he was not <laughs> even trying to have any of that smoke. Okay. So, he uh, was dancing. He kind of did oh. an Elliot Avent circle around the umpire <laughs> to get away from it. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good one. And there's no doubt that – College baseball definitely has a, lo- a love affair with the SEC, so I think that just that that has to do a little bit with it. It's just the 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 interest of Auburn, you know, rather than you know Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, Campbell hosting a regional. But I don't know. So in- interesting stuff there. But um, so I did I did do some breakout numbers here for Campbell. If you're interested, um, go for so it. So we are 32 and 12 all time against them, but they have won the last three out of the last four. So um, that just kind of speaks to their program having coming up a little bit. Uh, they are 11 and five against tournament teams. Uh, so not bad, but five of those games are against Tulane and Louisiana. So the bottom, the, the last okay. part of that. Okay. So, it's so a little asterisk there. Uh, they did sweep ECU uh, winning two at home and one on the road. That's an interesting series, how they did wow. that. Uh, mm-hmm. They took two or three from coastal. Um, they won the two at home and lost the one on the road. Lost twice to Duke, home and home, and beat UNC on the road. Interesting. Yeah. Just, just some comparisons there. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and, and ECU has been a weird one this year. Definitely, I know we are in. You know, we've been generally inconsistent this season, but ECU, man, like, yeah. there's no reason they should have lost to Tulane in the championship match. That was like the biggest. <laughs> what the heck are you doing? How did you just lose to Tulane and can give them you, can, out of it? Can you imagine if that was the team? That knocked state out and ECU yeah. was involved in that. Like Dude, in some ECU crazy... would have loved that, man. The ECU fans would have cherished <laughs> they that. Did it on purpose. Yeah, they did it on purpose. Yeah, it on purpose. Yeah, yeah, thankfully it yeah. didn't happen. No, yeah, I... you, you think about ECU's bats and how powerful their offense was in the games with uh NC State this year. And they went they went out to Wichita State and they got one hit one game and shut out and two hit one game and scored only one run. And I believe they lost the third game, not quite as uh, badly, but so yeah, ECU's really been uh, odd to figure this year. Yeah, no, they've been very weird for sure. But I mean, you know, I, I think this is, you know, one of the few times that I guess I think they hosted the re- a regional three years in a row, if I'm, I remember correctly. If I remember that, that sounded correctly. right. Yeah, I'm be surprised. Um, so, because uh, I know a couple, two or three years, it must have been three years ago. We went, we actually went to the ECU regional and lost. So, um, but yeah, and then Michelle brings up also an interesting little stat uh, to remember that ironically, Campbell has NC State's old scoreboard. Interesting. <laughs> enough. So, uh, kind of a little funny thing there. So, it's like, hey, Campbell, you know, you kind of owe us one. We gave you the scoreboard. So, <laughs> yeah. let us take on South Carolina and let's see, let's see which, uh, you know, which one can can dupe it out. But um, yeah. So, so tell me, Miss Scott. So, what what would you say that first game against Campbell? What would you say is the key? What would you say, you know, your prediction would be in terms of, uh, you know, do you go Willison, Whitaker, or do you go, like, you know, what would you say your kind of your strategy would be kind of heading into that first game? Which well, I think let's is hold a, on. Before I answer that, first off, if he had his choice, when Scott would throw nine innings. So <laughs> let's, that's true. Let's that's back true. that up a little bit. And, and back second. And back and second. second. Yeah. Go a little, go a little Sam Highfield. I like yes. it. Yeah. Yes. No, love one, Scott. <laughs> yeah. Um, Great question, and uh, I'm glad you asked it. If you don't mind, I'm going to back up to that for a second because what I'm going to say is that the coaches know their personnel a lot better than we do, so it's fun. I love how you guys at Tuffy Talk try to guess at things, and we try to figure things out, Um, but, you know, the coaches know infinitely more than I do about it, and it reminds me. I'm looking on social media tomorrow to see what people, not with Tuffy Talk, but around the – the state fan base are going to say, you know what? I bashed our non-conference schedule, but that 21 and two non-conference schedule helped get us in the tournament when we were 13 and six in the conference. There are a lot of people that owe uh, coach Avent an apology that we're bashing him this year. We need to clip that and post that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I mean, you're right. Yeah. Well, you know what? Yeah. Before you get too far, we talked about that about, about basketball and, and Michael, you kind of used that analogy earlier. It's like, nothing's nothing sexy on either end you just just putter along do your thing and then yeah then you shine in postseason yep. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing with, you know, it wasn't the toughest non, non-conference, but you won you won most of the games. I think, what did we lose? Two? two. Non-conference 21 games? to two. Yeah. yeah, so as long as you can win them, it really doesn't matter. But, you know, mm-hmm. if, if if you do get into a situation where you drop a couple non-conference, that's where it helps to have the stronger uh, schedule. But if you're going to win that's where you're them, thinking then... that the ACC is going to be the ACC, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. And if yeah. you go back to last year, we can never know for sure, but as the first team out, had we not played Campbell and lost at Campbell last year and had played a cupcake and won – that could have been enough to get us in last year. Just saying, you never know. And and while I'm on that, I want to mention that I, I don't know why we didn't schedule Campbell this year, but I know that their conference is so weak on the weekends that a lot of times they can throw their weekend starters like a bullpen and instead of 30 pitches, throw them 40, 45 against us, against us, knowing they're not going to need as much from them on the weekend. So when we played at Campbell and lost last year, uh, I believe they had two of their weekend starters go 45 pitches each. Mm-hmm. And then when they were ahead toward the end, they threw their closer. Now, when we play uh, other schools, they're not able to do that during the midweek. So I just wanted to mention those are Good things point. that coaches are thinking about that the average fan may not. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. But back to your original question. Um We've got to jump ahead early. Um, you know, my son and I don't talk a lot of the specifics about baseball because he he's living that 23 hours a day, seven days a week. So the one hour that we chat, you know, if he wants to talk baseball, we do. And sometimes we uh, we talk other things. But uh, one of the things I think is not a secret that Coach Avent has always wanted. You, you want to score first. You want to put a crooked number up somewhere and you want to respond anytime the other team scores by scoring. And that's easy to say and harder to do. But uh, I think especially in a regional, you just want to get on the board early. Get that zero off the board, I think, is really important. Um, And then when you do that, you get some confidence throughout the lineup. The pitchers don't feel like they have to carry the whole team on their back. So uh, as you ask for my you know, my thoughts to this, I think that's the key. Let's shut them down for at least the first few innings till we can get a run or two up on the board. And then then I like our chances going from there. I, I like I like like what you said there because it's it's in postseason play everything's magnified right every the next pitch is like everyone's on the edge of their seat to see what's going to happen next and so it's about applying pressure and and I mentioned earlier that their defensive numbers statistically are actually a little bit worse than us they're nine sixty seven we're nine seventy five so I think to your point the point is get get the ball in play make mm-hmm. them make a play right mm-hmm. whether it's a bunt yep. whether it's you know a hit and run you know stealing whatever it is just you know, be smart about it, but strategically just put that, keep applying pressure, keep that foot on the gas. Cause that's the one thing that I don't think we did that well against Duke. Now give credit to Duke is they threw everyone in the kitchen sink at us in that game. Yeah. And they really kept us at bay after we put those seven runs on the board. So yeah. um, the key is to score early and score often. I, I completely agree with you there. Mark. Yeah. What, well, and again, just, just for me, cause I feel like that that two big things too i would love to see more which i mean if we haven't started doing it by this point i don't think we're going to do it but i would love to see a little bit more consistency in the batting lineup to me it's just i i feel like that that baseball is and again i i I never played you know you know a lot a lot of baseball besides t-ball when i was a kid but i feel like from uh, from the amount of baseball scene it's a lot of its rhythm like if you're hot if you're rolling then you got to roll, but if you're cold, then you got to kind of work out of it. You know, you got to, you got to, you got to work through it. But the key is to have basically, and again, tell me, Miss Guy, if I'm right, but basically, if you can get, you know, half to two thirds of your lineup hot, but have some of your guys cold, it's a balancing guy because when, you know, when the cold guys become hot, some of the hot guys might become cold. Like it, it's a routine. Like, you know, which game, you know, do you have the guys, certain guys rolling? Like one game, it might be Parker. Nolan and uh, you know Candelaria rolling, but then the next game it might be Cozart and Cannon Peoples. Like you know, that's that's you know, it's not going to be the same guy every single time. I mean, unless you have just one superstar, which I mean, you know, we, I, I think I think we have some future superstars. You know, Cannon Peoples has been phenomenal this year. It's so excited for what he's going to do during his time at State. But um, also too, I mean, again, just 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 like Greg was saying, just do the little things. You know, we don't have to win the game in one hit, which I feel like from what I saw in the Miami game, it seemed like we were trying to crank it open in one pitch when it's like, just do the little things. You know, if you have a guy on first and second with one out, 
just work it around. We don't need a three run homer right now. Just work them around, you know, but um, we haven't really done that all season. So that's why it kind of worries me. But, you know, to me, I'm sitting here saying Parker Nolan being a senior that he is, uh, you know, this is last in Stubbley tournament. I mean, he's shown that he can be, a, you know, uh, a highlight reel out in center field. He's shown that, you know, he can be effective hitting the ball. To me, I mean, you know, I, I feel like you got to find a way to get him into the lineup and see what he can do. Uh, you know, that was kind of a big question mark for me was why wasn't he in there against Miami? But, you know, again, just like you were saying, Coach Scott, we are not in that locker room. And as a former state football you know, equipment manager, I can 100% say, I tell people this all the time, you're not, we're not at practice. We're not in the locker room. We have no idea what's going on. We don't know who's dealing with what, who's, you know, in a funk, you know, who's feeling good right now. Like, you know, we don't know any of that stuff. So then they, all we can do is just trust the coaching staff. And same thing as well when it comes to post, you know, season decisions. I know a lot of people are talking about right now, you know, who's going to be let go, who's going to transfer, blah, blah, blah. Let's just focus on right now. Let's focus on this weekend. Let's try and get through this weekend and if we do great if we don't then we'll deal with it then but at the end of the day even once the season is over once again reminder that it's boo corrigan ellie avent's decision that's going to decide it you know we could talk about until we're blue in the face and yeah you know some of the higher wolfpack club members you know can have their say and every in-state fan can have their say but i'm just saying that at the end of the day you know they're going to make decision that's best for what they feel for this program and uh, especially right now since we are really at a teetering stage with you know, where we two years ago, we went to the College World Series. Borderline should have won the national championship. We didn't get screwed. And also, too, now we have a lot of money and, and uh, renovations going into this football stadium. So to me right now, we got to keep this momentum going. We got to be moving up. You know, we, we didn't make the tournament last year. So let's make some noise this year. See if we can get to a regional against Florida or, you know, or Connecticut, whoever it is. And let's see what happens. You know, like everybody has said it all year. We have the talent to go as far as we want to go. It's just a matter of producing with it. You know, we got to make it happen. You know, we've seen it. We beat ECU. You know, we've beaten, you know, Coastal Carolina. You know, we've beaten, you know, we've won big games. We just got to do it more consistently. So that was my rant right there. That was a whole well, long that one. Was a, that was a rant. That was a long one. <laughs> but, Layton you, Layton, you know what? You started off asking me a question, and you were dead on. You said, you know, some guys are hot at one time, some are hot at another time. And in golf, I believe they talk about brother-in-law in it when, you know, I'm not playing well, but my partner's playing well. And then I play good on a hole where he's down and your brother-in-law. Uh, I think you're exactly right. We've had different guys hot at different times, which, like you said, shows that we've got a lot of good players. And you hope that uh, that not only does the coaching staff push the right buttons to get the right guys out there, but that the players will respond as well. I know there are times you know, we tend to notice if a coach makes a change and it doesn't work out, but we don't notice as much when he does a good thing. And I know there were times when suddenly uh, Chase Nixon comes in and gets a couple of doubles and does really well. Awesome Parker who hadn't played in a while comes in, gets a couple of home runs. So you hope that you can just find that uh, that magic that maybe uh, Joe Boo from Major League sprinkles the stuff on his bat to where at least six or seven of the guys are hot at the, uh, the right time. But you're definitely right, Leighton, is trying to get – uh, five, six of those guys hot uh, this weekend. So, so, like, kind of piggybacking off of that, like, we, we were spoiled the year we went to the College World Series. Coach Avent rolled out the same lineup 50-plus games. It, you know, you just – all he did was every day was just Xerox the one from the yesterday and pins it up there. I mean, it was so easy. But this year, you know, through injury, uh, you know, like you said, hot and cold, uh, whatever the case may be, is just finding the right guys at the right time uh, to, to just make it happen as a team unit because – Look, the best team in baseball today, the Tampa Bay Rays, just got one hit. So yep. it it doesn't matter. Like, But guess what? Tomorrow they can come out and score 15 runs. Baseball is the most fickle, stupid sport, and I love it. But <laughs> it's just – it's just – it's baseball. You know, like you get a hot pitcher, he's got your number. You know, it, it, if the – if the wind is blowing in a certain way, you know, you hit a ball, it should have gone 400 feet, it goes 288 feet. Like, it's just <laughs> – it's just a thing, man. So – um, and I say all of that is there's nothing that precludes us from getting on a run and going to Omaha. There's just nothing. We, yeah. we, we, we only beat ourselves. Uh, like you, some days you're going to have a good pitcher. You tip your hat to them. You know, they throw nasty stuff, whatever it may be. It's just what the game is. And so us as fans, 
Um, look, I, I, I went a little further than T-ball. I played high school ball, but like it still, it, it's a sport where it'll make you look smart on 30% of the time. And you're thinking, well, mm-hmm. you're a failure, bro. You're a hall of famer. Yeah. If you, if yeah. You're successful 30% of the time. Hey, Greg, that's the just, crazy. You're, you're just spot on. You and Layton are like a hundred percent, Michael, a hundred percent of the time tonight, because you're right. I tell people a lot that the New York Yankees and the L.A. Dodgers, when they are rolling and beating everybody, they still only win about 67% of their games. <laughs> they lose 37% of the time yeah. to some of the worst teams in the league. Baseball is very fickle, and we as fans want to look at it like basketball. We know that you know State or Duke or Carolina is at the top. We know they're going to win 9 out of 10 games against whoever. But baseball just isn't that way, even when you are the dominant team, because like you say, you're only as good as the next day starting pitcher or maybe a hitter goes in a slump. So, man, you guys are you guys are on top of it, man. That's why we like Tuffy Talk. You guys are on it. Appreciate it. Yeah. No, I mean, again, for me, I mean, I'm sitting here saying it because I know somebody asked a question about, you know, how far do we think state will go? And I've always said that predictions in baseball are absolutely useless who the heck knows it is not a clue it is just buckle your seatbelt let's see where this thing goes now i mean you know if i'm a betting man you know and i were to pick a team i think is going to win the world series i have a hard time looking past what past wake forest just because their their bullpen is absolutely phenomenal. the number one seed hasn't won since the 90s 1999 i believe yeah it's yeah. crazy and, and, but, I, but i'm sitting here saying wake forest is so like well-rounded mm-hmm. like like they have six guys who hit over 300 their bullpen they have four guys that that are uh, have a, under a 2.3 era i mean they're just so stacked from top to bottom but yeah i agree i mean again it, it's definitely tough and but i also say as well that i think honestly them losing the ac championship will you know hopefully provide a little bit more momentum for them but hey listen in the postseason if state ends up facing them in omaha hey Anything could happen. I'm not sitting here saying that. All right. Well, it was it was nice. It was nice while it lasted. No. Hey, listen. But, if we're feeling it, let's take them. Let's go. Base, yeah. Baseball is such a crazy sport. I'll use two examples. Another. I don't think both of them were in college. I watched the highlight where the team won a state championship the other day on a drop third strike. Oh yeah. 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 Right. I saw another team drop a pop fly right in front of home plate, and the other team scored the winning run to win a ball game. Mm-hmm. It's the dumbest sport. I'm telling you, <laughs> but I love it. What? Oh, and, and it's not over until the 27th out is made, right? It's not 60 uh-huh. minutes. It's not, you know, 40 minutes. It's when the 27th out is done. It, yep. That's the game. So that's you never call it. I mean, it's mm-hmm. just it's just a sport that. I mean, that the, the 2021 uh, Omaha team is a perfect mm-hmm. example of that. I mean, we went yep. to Arkansas, lost the first game, what, 21 to 2? 21 to 2, 21 to 3. Yeah, we got yeah. destroyed. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and we still win that series and we're minus like 18 runs. Yeah. On the run yeah. differential. I mean, it's just hilarious. It's crazy, right? So, yeah. Look, we say all of that. Like, you can make predictions, and like, like you can look at all the analytics, and you know, look, look at. I mean, well, again, we'll use this example: Moneyball. Homeboy constructed the perfect lineup and got to the uh, got to the playoffs, but didn't win. Right? Like, you can do everything right. You can you can do everything what they tell you to do, but the ball is going to do what the ball is going to do at the end of the day. So, mm-hmm. I, I'm yep. excited about this. I think. Um, again, like I said earlier, I like going on the road. There's less pressure on you. Um, you know, you, you just go out and play loose. And I think that's when you play your best baseball is when you're not pressing and you just go out and have a good time and th- remember when you were, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11 years old playing in little league. Yep. Well, and, and for me, you know, looking at this right now, cause I, I think just to kind of wrap up kind of this one piece here, I want to kind of break this down to just like three keys. Like, you know, if state is going to get through this regional, what are three keys that we need to focus on? You know, that if we're going to get ball, this hit ball, team. field ball. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, no, I, I would say, honestly, just like, just like Miss guy was saying, I, I think that getting off to a hot start early is uh-huh. huge setting the tone, especially against a team like Campbell, where I think it's going to be, again, I mean, Campbell can surprise me. I don't know necessarily how big their fan base is, but I would say that, I mean, we're, you know, going to have a pretty big show in there for that first game, uh, you know, and looking forward to it. So, I mean, I think if we can get, you know, the momentum flowing, you know, get into a field quickly, that'll be huge. Uh, but I, I like from a pitching side, just just continue doing what we're doing. I mean, like we our pitching's been solid, you know, uh, you know, recently. Like it's the, the reasons we've lost have not been because of pitching, in, in my opinion, against Miami. I mean, we only yeah. gave up 
really three runs due to pitching. You know, I know, you know, one was a pass ball by uh, um, Cozart. Cozart. Uh, yeah, Cozart. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, pitching did everything they needed to against Miami. Just batting, we just couldn't do anything past that first first inning. So, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and that goes yeah. back to what Greg said about the ball bouncing. That pass ball, Cozart actually smothered it, but it hit off his shin guard and goes yeah. – 40 feet back out to the pitcher's mound. You can't yeah. predict that kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> and, and honestly, the, the one of the, you know, we've had some Achilles heels all year. Let's, 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 let's not beat that um, around, but situational hitting men left on base has been a, a really, a really one that when we look back, if we don't get the results that we want, that's going to be something where we'll be like, yeah. Cause I think, I think that Miami game, we had like 10 or 11 left on. Um, yeah. And so yeah, good teams, you have to take advantage of situations when you have men on base because those don't just present themselves all the time. And so when you no. and again, it goes back to putting pressure on the defense, put pressure on that defense, make them go out and make a play. Uh, you know, in college, college baseball, especially you'll see teams make two, three, four errors a game. It's not uncommon. I mean, mm-hmm. um, I think it's more uncommon to see a clean error column on both teams than it is at least one team making at least one error. So yep. that one error could be the difference of winning a ball game or not winning a ball game. And it's just putting the ball in play and see what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Miss Scott, would you add any other kind of keys to that before we kind of wrap this piece up here? I, I will uh, double down on what Greg said. You're right. When you look at the playoffs, more people are familiar with major league playoffs and world series and the Yankees have been a great team, but they don't manufacture runs. And when you're facing number one and number two starters, you've got to manufacture and claw for run here and there. You're not going to get as many home runs. And the college uh, World Series and college playoffs are the same. You know, until you get down to that second, third, fourth day out of the loser's bracket or whatever, everybody's using their top pitchers. And you've got to manufacture some runs, like Greg said, either by um, – getting some timely hits with men in scoring position or uh, stealing some bases, uh, putting some pressure on the defense. So I, uh, I agree with, uh, with that a hundred percent. One thing before we wrap up on, on this, the, the presumptive pitcher for Campbell has a two, eight, two ERA. So yeah, that goes out. Good. Yeah. Very good. So that being said, when you get people on, you have to figure out a way he's only mm-hmm. going to give you potentially three runs. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and Greg, that reminds me. Um, I would uh, hope that the players that confidence we talked about and Wake Forest, the consensus number one team in the nation, we played them twice this year. Yeah. We were ahead of them in the seventh inning one game, yeah. tied with them in the seventh inning in the other yeah. game uh, with great pitchers that I'm sure are as good or better than anybody we face. So we yeah. need that confidence that we can that we can score against anybody. That's a good point. Really good point. Yep. And again, uh, you know, salute 35, I think, you know, says it best here saying, you know, runners left on base and errors have been the biggest issue for us all year has to change to win this regional, but nothing has changed all year. So let's hope uh, something finally works. And I mean, I say once again, that, you know, up until this point, we've had issues that have plagued us the entire season, but again, you know, Friday's a new day. It, It can change, you know, on Friday now. I mean, again, is it, you know, if it does change on Friday, it's going to be like, well, why did we do this earlier? Like, you know, like, you know, why, why do we wait till now to, to, to make it right? But, you know, hey, listen, we're sitting here saying, we, you know, yesterday's too far gone. You know, you know, tomorrow's, you know, another opportunity. That's all we can do is just control, control Friday, 1 p.m. versus Campbell in Columbia, South Carolina. I don't even know the name of their stadium. I was just I was trying to Founders Park. Name. Founders Park. Okay. In Founders Park in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, is it going to be hot there, Greg? Have you even looked at the weather yet? Man, I have, you know, <laughs> so many things in trying mm-hmm. to figure this out. I haven't even looked at the weather. Not sure. I, been I looked, something. I looked, uh, yeah. low, low to mid, uh, eighties and the lows in the low to mid sixties. So that can be one of the hottest places on the East coast. So thank God mm-hmm. it's not one of those 95 degree, uh, times. But yeah, it should be 82 to 84 for the high each day is what I saw. That's, yeah, that's, and I don't know enough about the ballpark to know how the ball travels and all of that. That's just one of those things where, you know, if we were talking, if it was being played at Doak, we can talk about the Doak stream, and we know all, we know all the ins and outs <laughs> of how that ballpark plays. So, yeah. um, just you know, you just go out and play the game, man. I mean, at the end of the day, it's you know, hit ball. I, I mean, I said it earlier, and I, I was kind of joking, but it's it's the basic fundamentals. And if you go out and do those things, you give your chance, you give yourself to win, uh, give yourself a chance to win a ball game. Yeah. But the other thing I want to say too is. Let's go out and root against South Carolina because I will say watching the games last year where the regional teams got knocked out really early, 
those ballparks and those latter stages of the games are quiet, and that could be your advantage. We don't want a rowdy mm-hmm. park, man, against us. Yeah. Not to say we can't go out and play in that, but I definitely would prefer it not to. Yeah, because, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, there's one thing for sure. South Carolina definitely loves – their baseball have has a huge. I I would say you know they're probably one of definitely the top fifteen twenty uh, programs in terms of baseball tradition. I mean, getting I mean one of the few teams yes. to ever win back to back national championships is pretty big. Uh, With our old uh, coach, so, let's not talk about that. Uh, Ray, hey, let's say hey, listen. You know Ray Tanner. You know can't. I mean he did a lot here at state, and uh, you know went on to. You know South Carolina win back back national championships, and now is athletic director. So I mean you yeah. know hey, can't hey. To, to me, I have no issues. Right? Hey, I've actually spoken with Ray Tanner before. A great guy, uh, yeah. for sure, and definitely still loves loves NC State. State will always have a special place in his heart. And I know that uh, Coach Avon today was even talking about you know the opportunity of uh, you know competing, not necessarily against, but uh, you know seeing his old uh, uh, oh man mentor. What, what's the word? mentor. Yeah, I was like mentor uh, <laughs> in Ray Tanner and former NC State baseball coach. So excited for that. Um, so. Uh, Yep. So anyway, well, thank you, Ms. Scott. I really do appreciate your time. Thank you so, so much again. Uh, you know, definitely looking forward to, uh, you know, seeing y'all in, in, in Columbia uh, this weekend. And hopefully uh, y'all can come back here to Raleigh, uh, uh, you know, by Sunday or Monday with a big regional win. And we'll start making plans for Florida or Connecticut, whichever comes next. Hey, real quick. Hey, hey, Mark, if you want to share your socials out there, you're always you're you're a really good baseball follow. If you want to share it, throw it out there. If not, no worries. Uh, well, thanks. I believe the uh, Instagram may be Dub Scott Dad. Um, heck, I don't even, do you recall what my uh, Twitter handle is? Is it just Mark Scott? I don't even remember, Greg. Do you remember? Uh, I don't, man. I just I just know you. <laughs> well, uh, I, I'll post priority. it in the chat. I'll post it in the chat. I just muffed the punt, didn't I? Sorry, yeah, man. I muffed the punt. I, I threw the alley and you ooped it. So That's you right. ooped it. Yeah. Hey guys, I, again, I appreciate all that you guys do. You do a great job of growing the fan base of state sports and you do it in the right way. You guys question things. We think, Hey, why wasn't this done? Why wasn't that done? But you guys never bash our people. You do it in a great way that I think the parents, the family, the friends of everybody can get behind you guys. That's why we respect you so much. Uh, and we don't want you to stop questioning things. That's what helps build it you know it's, it's kind of like debate if you just sit there with people that agree with you all the time you don't improve your own argument so we love what you guys do you do it in the right way and talking baseball is like my porn so call me anytime <laughs> <laughs> hey mark Absolutely. mark yes, i can't i can't share your stupid twitter handle i need you to change it <laughs> oh uh, oh oh sorry guys i believe it may be the mj unc one yeah two, three yeah, we oh, should have yeah. done this full disclosure nonsense beginning <laughs> that Mark's a UNC graduate. Yes, so I am a wouldn't... UNC grad, ran track at Carolina, but my best times were always at NC State. My best track times were here. I lived with some of my high school buddies that went to NC State my last semester at uh, Carolina, and I'm all in on the pack, guys. I mean, you're going to see it for the first time from Mark Scott. I love it. Thank you, Ms. Yeah. Scott. appreciate you, and go Pack, baby. We'll see you all soon. Thanks, Mark. Awesome. All righty, y'all. Well, yeah, definitely, you know, just excited for sure. And hey, just just a reminder again, hey, now, you know, you know this guy's talking about, you know, his, his you know, track days at UNC. Hey, now it's just a little segue. bit of a cross-country school, you yeah. know, there. So, yeah. Uh, so, you know, just saying. Uh, but I do want to, you know, highlight a couple uh, more t- uh, tweets of the week here uh, talking about the baseball side before we jump on over to talking about Patrick Bailey uh, and Diana Schneider as well. So with that being said, Let's jump on over some tweets of the week. All righty. So this first one here is from the David Glenn show uh, talking about uh, the 2023 NCAA baseball bids in terms of state representation. So meaning, uh, so for example, North Carolina leads the, the race with eight teams that receive bids in the NCAA baseball tournament uh, with Campbell, Charlotte, Duke, ECU, State, UNC, UNC Wilmington, and Wake Forest. And then the closest uh, state is Texas was six. But the interesting thing, though, is that none of those six are regional hosts, which I think yeah. is they were telling you saying is one of the first mm-hmm. times in a while that there's not a single team from the state of Texas that's a regional host. So Yeah, it's it's really weird. You look at the, the geographic map, it's like everyone is east of the Mississippi, and you had one little lone one out there in Stanford. It was uh, – it's pretty pretty wild to see the you know that was one of the things they kept 
complaining about was, you know, growing the game. But yeah. look, those are the best teams. Those are the best teams. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I also want to give a shout out as well. Uh, you know, I, I know uh, just kind of a little bit of a sidetrack here. Uh, you know, uh, Seth was talking uh, here in this comment, talking about how Caleb Martin with the Miami Heat got a bucket tonight. And also, too, just just so y'all know, there's five minutes left in the first quarter and it was nine to six last time I saw. So wow. very low scoring. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, crazy. But anyway, jump back into this. So uh, hold on, yeah. hold on. Pack pro question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. And, and again, I know, I know I kind of, uh, you know, maybe sense of people sideways talking about, uh, you know, Caleb Martin and uh, the Martin twins, uh, you know, versus Maverick Rowan. But, you know, that's still another thing where that's, that's, that's what I've heard repeatedly, but at the end of the day, it's, it's still an in the locker room thing. So, you know, it's, it's just, you know, he said versus she said, and at the end of the day, you know, listen, you know, I, what happened happened, hopefully for better reasons than worse. Hopefully it was, for the Martin twins, you know, wanting a better opportunity, not necessarily just to get away from us. You know, it's, it's just, no, I, I think the common, you know. the common perception out there was they were chased off. I think yeah. a lot of what you hear and read, um, you know, when you see it yeah. more often than not, and that becomes the narrative, usually that's what usually happens. Well, and exactly. I've heard from multiple people that Mark Godfrey had a love for Maverick Rowan. He loved <laughs> Maverick Rowan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, which, you know, didn't work out. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Godfire is not here no more. So, you know, we'll move on from that. The but, only yeah, thing nothing... that saved that was the Maverick movie. That was the worst Maverick control, <laughs> the Maverick movie. So I'm, I'm glad yeah. I'm glad Maverick Top Gun saved that. Exactly. Before that, Maverick was a dirty word. Exactly. So, I mean, then they, for, for me as a state fan, hopefully for most state fans, I mean, you know, you're going to cheer, cheer for the, for the Martin twids, uh, you yeah. know, we're doing great, uh, in the pros, Caleb Martin with, uh, Miami and, uh, Cody Martin with, uh, Charlotte, uh, Less so, myself, uh, yeah. so excited for them, but jumping back into this though. So for me, honestly, the first thing that comes to my mind is last year when we did kind of our North Carolina tour, where we basically faced pretty much every single team from the state of North Carolina and thinking about how much baseball has grown, uh, you know, in this area. Cause honestly, for me, I'm sitting here saying this gotta be definitely a recruiting pitch of a sort for sure. I mean, you know, then this is the most teams that have qualified for NCAA baseball tournament in North Carolina history, uh, you know, having eight. So, I mean, it's obvious that's screaming out the growth of baseball, and uh, you know the 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 competition level in this area. I mean, if you come to any one of these schools in the area, you know, even just out of conference, you're going to be competing against some of the best teams that that college baseball has to offer. You know, and right down the road, you know, you got literally Clemson, South Carolina, and Coastal Carolina, three teams from the state of South Carolina that made the tournament as well. So that's that's eleven teams right now, just between North Carolina, and South Carolina. So if you come to this area, you are competing against the best that college baseball has to offer just statistically. Yeah. And here's the thing I'll, I'll, I'll use too, is if you just look at state size comparison, right? You have North Carolina, mm-hmm. you get state size like Texas, California, Florida. Those are hotbeds of baseball, right? And, mm-hmm. and you add up Florida and California combined, the North Carolina, state of North Carolina still has more, right? Mm-hmm. So just the fact that, um, you know, North Carolina is a great place, warm weather. You can play year round. I, I I see this, you know, becoming more and more um, the norm instead of the instead of the outlier. Because you look at these yeah. programs on this list; these are some traditional, with the exception of maybe Duke. Um, these are teams that have been co- continuously good for you know five, ten, wow. fifteen years. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, Wake Forest has a great, you know, a, a long-standing tradition and it has gotten better and better over the years. Uh, UNC Wilmington, they love and breathe their their baseball. Uh, UNC State, ECU, ECU loves their baseball. Duke, as of recently, has started to really kind of climb. Uh, and the same thing with Campbell and Charlotte as well. So, uh, again, yeah, I mean, but, we picked a couple of guys off the Charlotte squad, right? You know, Gino and Gino, uh, Don Palali. Don so, Palali, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Anything to add here, Michael, before we move on to our next tweet? Uh, I I just think it's with that many teams from North Carolina. I mean, it's impressive where where we are. I mean, I, that level of competition just in your own state is crazy. 
Absolutely. Yep. And they want to add in this one comment here from Michelle saying, I lived in Omaha for a year and the, the traditional college war series schools had bars that they called their own. I would love to see and stay have their own bar in Omaha soon. I mean, I, I've said it and I, I've told my parents this because uh, when we went to Omaha back in 2021, I went by myself and I said, I said, next time my wife and my parents like y'all are going with this. Like it's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it was awesome. it, it's, it's such an experience. Like, it's hot as all get outs. Like it's scary hot, honestly. Uh, but I mean, it's just there's nothing like it. There's no experience like it. Uh, in all I mean, can we take a, t- a minute to talk about that too? Because I think that's like yeah. an underrated. Because Michelle's completely right. I went to I can't remember the name of the dang bar. My dad was at one place. We were grabbing food. I went over there to grab food, and then of course it was the bar that had like a a, um, a scoreboard of shots, and so I mm-hmm. bought like five. I bought the first five for NC State, and Ole Miss killed it last year, which yeah. I was excited. For yeah. Them too. yeah, yeah. But the uh, the one guy he owned a bar right outside of uh, Arkansas Stadium, and uh, yeah, like Michelle said, like that was their official Arkansas bar while they were there in Omaha, and yep. I remember when um, my, it was first. I was my dad and I's. Um, trip it was father's day i had just gotten married like three weeks ago i left my bride to go to omaha i said see ya <laughs> like we're we're going to omaha like like, to omaha. like we have a lifelong together i don't know how many times that <laughs> state's gonna go to omaha so i go i, I mm-hmm. met late in the, within the first hour or so um the cops yep. we get pulled over at the airport and the cops were like go beat you know um, somebody, I can't remember who, cause they knocked out Nebraska. And so they, they, they adopted us as like their team of like mm-hmm. destiny. Oh, it was, it was Arkansas, Arkansas yeah. knocked them out. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, it was just an awesome time. And then I remember after the Vanderbilt game, we go out drinking and partying and like, there's like a, it's like a club environment and the players and the families were just all like hooping and hollering. It was like the best week of my life until, the NCAA <laughs> decided to tell me to go home. You know, you're drunk. No. You can't stay uh, here. So, but I, I, all that being said, if, if anyone, and even if a state doesn't make it, you, it's a bucket list item. If you're a truly a sports fan, right. You know, and maybe it's going to an all-star game or going to the Kentucky Derby. It's just one of those things as a sports fan, you got to go put it in the check in the box and tickets are cheap. And um, the city of Omaha really embraces it. And Michelle was spot on with that comment. And because just to remind you as well, uh, you know, for those, you know, because I know that when we were in Omaha that this question came up multiple times, but that stadium is primarily centered for the College World Series. Yep. Like, you know, yeah. it's not a professional mm-hmm. stadium for somebody else. Like they'll do a couple games here and there around it, but but like that stadium is for the College World Series. Yeah, I think Creighton primarily. plays their home baseball games there, but that's it. Like but that's it. And yeah, the, because I mean, they, they have the yeah. Storm Chasers, which is a triple A team for the Royals. Mm-hmm. two towns over like they right. built their own mm-hmm. state like that was a big contention they're like no like we are building yeah. this strictly wow. for the college world, world series. series to mm-hmm. host it every year um yep. but yeah they yep. it's a great environment and um yep. if you do go skip the first weekend go the like the following in the middle of the week tickets are cheaper and the hotels drop drastically the hotel prices like they know what they're doing it's you know capitalism at its best of course we say that but that first weekend that 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 I happened to go was obviously end up being the weekend to go. So as long yeah. as there's not a clo- global pandemic going on, then, <laughs> yeah. then yeah, I would I would recommend going with Greg's recommendation there, going the second weekend. So yeah, absolutely. Point. All right, y'all. And then moving on to our next tweet of the week here. So this is kind of an interesting one. I want to hear uh, some. I know we have uh, some people here with us. I want to hear your thoughts. But how surprised were you at? the fact that we were not one of the last four teams in, that made the tournament. Uh, the four teams that the NCAA came out with were Arizona, uh, Louisiana, Lafayette, Troy, and Oklahoma. But State was not even in the last four, which, I mean, says that we pretty much were sol- solidly in. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I would say that even if uh, – I can't remember. There was one – oh, uh, if, if like Notre Dame uh, had beaten Wake Forest, that, you know, we, may, we probably still right. would have been in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so this is telling us we were 60 or lower, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're – yeah. even yeah. before that, you were, because there were three bids stolen on Sunday. So that means we weren't even – we were like in the mid-50s. Right. Before yeah, that. that happened. So, yeah. And I think that goes back to, Michael, what you were talking about the RPI earlier, right? Like, yeah. That, I mean, that was the metrics that they really honed in on this year for mm-hmm. whatever reason. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. 
Um, and yeah, so Michelle says, grateful we were not one of the last four and shows importance of RPI. Well, again, importance of RPI for this year, but next year <laughs> it could be completely yeah. different. Like, it, and it's go ahead with baseball, the being in the last four in doesn't really mean as much in basketball because in basketball, you gotta, right. if you're in the last four in, you have to play an additional game with baseball. Right. It's just right, you're just yeah. last four, you just go into a tougher region. Right. Yeah, yeah. Because well, because exactly. they, allegedly they they snake down as well. Mm-hmm. Now the one thing you know we were talking about the RPI and you know if they change it or whatever. But Coach Avent you know, in his press conference this afternoon about getting in, um, one one of the first highlights was for the first 20, 30 minutes he didn't even know who we were playing because they were celebrating so much they lost they, they didn't, didn't he see. didn't see it on the screen so then he had to <laughs> he had to figure it out so I thought that was pretty funny and then uh, that's awesome. Yeah, then he was talking about well, if you if you move the goalpost or change the criteria for getting in, he's like, we've already scheduled our opponents for the next two years based on current cr- current conditions. Mm, so, interesting. like, yeah. like you really just can't drop it and flip it, right? So mm-hmm. we'll uh, yeah, we'll see what they do in the in the in the in the future. But that seems to be a big bone of contention for folks is the RPI, yeah. and yeah. and and we we found this out with basketball. There's no one good solid one size fits all metric you're that never, you're going to be able yeah, to apply. Someone's always going to have an argument for being the 65th team, right, or whatever that number is that gets you left out of the tournament. So then they're, they're just, all you're going to keep saying is, well, just add more teams, add more teams. Well, at that point, everybody gets a darn participation trophy. So exactly. at some point, you have to draw the line in the sand. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and you want a level of competition too. Like you don't want you know the the a team that finished in the middle of the Pac-12 playing Florida or something like that. It's like okay, I mean, I know anything can happen, but I mean, let's be real here. So yeah, I, I agree. And and to kind of prove that point on our next tweet of the week here from Warren Nolan, uh, when the ESPN you hold, know, on, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, no, Michael Tracy, this dude stole. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he saw my tweet. But... Yeah, I don't know either. But well, you definitely, the if you look at the timestamps, your timestamp was in before. <laughs> I got you, Michael. Don't let don't let Leighton tell you nothing different. Hey, no, hey, listen, you're right. Again, I didn't even think about that, but you're 100% right. Again, our boy Michael Tracy has been on the button over the last 48 hours. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, so anyway, so Michael Tracy and Warren Nolan said. Uh, <laughs> I had to use his website to get the to get the info, so there okay, you go. So, so credit partial there to him. All right, cool. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, but uh, you put in the work, Michael. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> All right. So in the selection shows, uh, bash the RPI segment. Uh, let's cherry pick like two teams. Uh, and and basically ESPN was comparing uh, UC Santa Barbara versus NC State. Basically, this graphic for those who were listening was saying, well, both these teams. So State was thirty five and nineteen overall. So UC Santa Barbara was thirty five and twenty overall. So just one more loss, same amount of wins. Uh, State was ten and seventeen against top fifty teams. UC Santa Barbara was six and four versus top 50 teams. Uh, but then the big difference is that RPI state was 23. UC Santa Barbara is 56. So obviously on ESPN, they were like, like, you know, how, how could, you know, UC Santa Barbara not get in, but state does get in. And basically Can I pause you late for one second. Go ahead. And I will buy anyone a steak dinner. If they can tell me what conference USC Santa Barbara plays in. I, yeah, I, I'm, well, it's I not a power five, right? So. <laughs> right, right. But 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 yeah. you get what I'm saying. And and I and I get it. Like they're out playing baseball. Like, you know, they're probably the this is, this is probably gonna sting when I say this. They're probably the Campbell of the West Coast, right? A good, good solid team that's a conference that nobody knows of because anyone on the West Coast would probably just say the same about Campbell. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and because the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of a smaller school like UC Santa Barbara is you think, well, strength of schedule has to come into play here. And a hundred percent does state right. strength. of schedule was 21. UC Santa Barbara was 90. And that's 90. the point I was that making right so, about the conference comparison. Yep. And, and Seth, mm. uh, and Seth makes the other comment before I, before I let you go, Michael, about how UC Santa Barbara played zero teams in the top 25 RPI state played 17 games against top 25 RPI. Go ahead, Michael. And this was just such a weird comparison to single out these two because UC yeah. Santa Barbara wasn't, they weren't even in the first four out. Right. Yeah. They weren't even close. So I don't, I, I don't know, but yeah. yeah. So like, uh, who was that? Who just Seth. said that comment? Seth. Seth. Yeah. UC Santa Barbara, the best team they played was Oregon, who was 34, um, <laughs> which, which they swept Oregon at 34, but that was the highest team in the RPI they played. Like so, so there's state. your thing. They swept a they swept a tournament team, right? Yeah. That's their claim to fame. Yeah, but they all they also didn't play anyone higher than 
34 in the RPI when State had, I think, 22 games higher than that with six of them wins, a bunch of them top 10. But, and, Michael, didn't you even say, like, the stat they used wasn't even the most up-to-date as well? No, so that was – I I got that mixed up. That was okay. UC Irvine, not UC Santa oh. Barbara. But mm. in the same vein, it's it also just – Yeah, yeah. Like, and UC Santa Barbara also had seven losses to teams 150 or higher. Like, that's obviously going to tank your RPI. So yeah. I, I just want to – I look, I just want to put that right there because she ain't wrong. Right. Yes. Like – from from not knowing our name, right? From North Carolina Wolfpack or whatever, Stanford <laughs> Wolfpack, whatever they want to call us, because I've seen and heard it all. To yeah. how much the love effect, the love fest goes with Duke and Carolina, I she's not wrong. I mean, and and maybe we're being petty. I don't know. Like, call me king of petty. Then, like, I, I get so like tired of because it always feels like all they do is just pile on us. Like, I, I just think so. Because, like I said, I State wasn't in the last four in, and UC yeah. Santa Barbara wasn't in the first four out. It'd be one thing if you're, like, comparing the last two teams, the one that got in and the one that got left yeah. out. But, like, it, I don't know. Well, the one thing which I did think was funny, I uh, can't remember who, which it was one of the last – it was one of the first or last four out teams. And I remember they interviewed the uh, – this is the one clip I did see from the interview was uh, they interviewed the uh, NCAA uh, chair guy mm-hmm. and asked like, you know, what, what did this team need to do, you know, in order to make it? And the guy was like, well, he, they did everything right. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, obviously they did. It. How'd you say yeah, he that? Was, <laughs> like, he was so asleep on. at the wheel when they, when they were yeah. doing the, like, he was so ill prepared. And yeah, I'm like, it's like, it's like, wait, you, you just that? said that a team that you're leaving out of tournament did quote unquote everything, everything right? Right, yeah. Yeah. No, you got no. like don't say well, that. Well, maybe Luckily, buddy, you did everything wrong. Like, yeah. I mean, I I don't I I don't I don't know how you even like I guess he was the worst interview. He he was he was trying to tap dance through every tough question. Yeah. And I'll give ESPN credit. Like they, they did ask him the tough he questions. Did, yeah. He did ask. But was, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you weren't going to get an answer from them because, I mean, at the, yeah. at the end of the thing, the day, at the end of the day, the, the, the deed has been done. Absolutely. Yeah. That's also, exactly. and it's also, I don't envy envy that job either, which Bucorian has for the college football playoff. Luckily, this year, the playoff ended up pretty simple. Like, it was pretty universally was agreed on, but way. he's yeah. got two more years, so he may make a fool of himself on TV sometime like this guy, but we'll see. Well, and because, again, like, what other sport is there where, like last year, the, the one of the last teams to get into the tournament that barely got in ended up winning the national championship. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, at that point, you're justifying. You hate to see it. Yeah, right. Because, yeah, because yeah, exactly. most of the time they're they're at best fifty fifty getting it right. Yeah, mm-hmm. at best. So when yeah. they can say, "Look, this last team that we put in won the whole thing." That yeah, be- and you and you know that's going to be something they hang their hat on forever. So oh, it, for it's sure. just like, all right, whatever. Yeah. But at the end of the day, yeah. we, we got in, we were safely in. And here's the other thing, too. Like, yeah. if you if you looked at Twitter, the sky was falling over the last probably 72 <laughs> hours, right? And, and and I thought we were in, but again, state stuff is a real thing, no matter how hard you want to deny it. Yeah. And so you were just like, okay, when is the shoe going to fall and we're going to be out again? Yeah. And then, you know, we're talking about, okay, where do we go from now? Back-to-back seasons, not making the tournament. And, yeah. like, what is – you know, what does Boo do? You, you're trying to build a new facility, <laughs> essentially, or redo the facility. You know, you're going to probably lose recruits. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. Thankfully, we're not having that discussion today. Yes. We're talking about what do we do to need to win a, win a regional. So yeah. thank goodness for that. Yeah. yeah. Nope. And, and that, again, go ahead, Michael. I was just going to say, looking back, that pit sweep was huge. I mean, if, I even, so. if we went, even if we went two and one in that and still won the series but dropped the game, I don't know if we'd be. It, it, we that's a great point too, because here's the thing: you go two and one, don't win the right two, you mm-hmm. may not make the ACC tournament. Then you're definitely probably not making the NCAA tournament, yeah, right? So we too. went from outside in to in, win a game, <laughs> and then secure. You know, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it, it look. Yeah. Um, Sam said it right. Like we are surging at the right time. We we've won five of six, I think, something like that. Uh, Four or five. Four or five. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but yep. we won midweek too. The week, no wait, no, we, we, no, we, no, we had no midweek that week. Yeah. Midweek, midweek, yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. we're we're doing what we need to do. Now we just got to go out and get consistent, and you know, get some exactly. good results. And Michelle kind of wraps us up here the best saying until the announcement is made or clock goes zero, we hold our breath, and that's that's yeah. the life of NC State fan for sure. You 
hold your breath and just see what happens. <laughs> so luckily enough today, uh, the news is on our side. But just to kind of wrap this thing up here, a couple other things I want to talk about. So Drew Johnson here uh, puts together a tweet saying that only eight athletic programs made a football bowl game. The men's and women's bat and, and women's the men's and women's NCAA basketball tournament and the NCAA baseball tournament. Now I do want to you know preface this that a lot of people said this as well that we lost the bowl game, we got <laughs> we knocked out of the first, first round, round of both basketball you know <laughs> tournaments of opening rounds. Uh, so yes, I get that for sure. But so you're saying there's a chance. So yeah. so basically, what I'm saying is that there's no way that we go no that, that that we lose in the regional in the baseball tournament because there's <laughs> no way we we have that much bad luck you know in, in four <laughs> postseason opportunities but again y'all it's just great to see and again we want, want to point out that these eight names as well includes nc state duke iowa alabama maryland tennessee texas and yukon so yeah again, UConn on there that's um, that's yeah. a surprising one but you know. yeah yeah we could have really cherry picked this and if, if we threw tennis in there i bet we're the only one right no i think, uh, I think uh texas, probably do probably, probably, probably texas uh, probably texas yeah but uh, anyway but still maybe three or four schools yes <laughs> yeah. you're right so yeah, but again, it goes but, back to the Capital One Director Cup points, right? Like I feel like we're oh, going to yeah. have a great a great showing when those final numbers come out here, probably in the next three to four weeks. As long as we don't get disqualified, where instead of getting points for baseball, you get zero points for baseball. <laughs> yeah. Just saying, that was a that was a <laughs> that's the ultimate. I, I would say that's honestly one of the bigger screws, even of just the of anything else, because instead of getting a good amount of points for making it to the College World Series, you get zero because you got disqualified yeah. back. It's like you never showed up. Stupid. Yeah, basically, it's like you didn't even play the season. That's that was crap. <laughs> um, so yeah, just wanted to add that in. And then the last one here, uh, you know, that's a uh, David Teal saying that's a wrap on conference championships for ACC. That state actually tied Clemson with four uh, ACC mm-hmm. titles uh, in the in, in the 2022-2023 at- athletic season. And then uh, UVA and uh, Virginia Tech and Duke are second with three. So, again, you know, I know that there's a lot of comments about, well, you can't necessarily say this was because of Boo. Absolutely not. And anybody who's been a state fan for more than three years knows that. I mean, Debbie Yao set the bar and she got mm-hmm. us to that point. And then I think, honestly, Boo, it's just been just He's right in the course of your life. Because the only thing which I do want to, I do got to say this again too, that like, I would say that ever since Boo has come on, the pressure level has really stepped up uh, in terms of from that from his role as NCAA athletic director. What do I mean by that? Within literally three or four months, he had to deal with the 2021 College World Series crap. Like right out of the gate, he had to deal with that. Uh, he's had to deal with uh, conference realignment conversations. Uh, you know, he's had to deal with uh, you know state women's basketball having to go play at, at Connecticut uh, versus UConn. You know those conversations like. He's had to deal with softball, you know, moving on from the head coach. Like, yeah, there's it, it, there's a lot there that's that's mm-hmm. not normal for sure. Conference realignment and the College World Series alone. Those two things are Don't huge. the bowl game, too, in, in uh, yeah. UCLA. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That, too. I mean, dude, so that's – I mean, and because, yeah. and again, I can say this from from an internal aspect that Boo Corrigan was one of the lead guys – trying and begging and being on the call 24 seven to try and find state another place to go play a bowl game. And just, there was just no opportunity that came available. And so I can't, I can't say enough that again, I know every state fan says, well, but we don't know what he's thinking. We don't know what he is doing like we did with Debbie Yao, but listen, he's done a great job of keeping everything that Debbie Yao has done and trying to build on it. So huge pass off to do. Yeah. I don't say this. There's probably, a hundred different leadership styles, right? And not one is the best way of leading. But at the end of the day, it's all about being results oriented. And mm-hmm. I think we're seeing that we are getting good results from his leadership. So I I don't have a problem with him not, you know, having the you know the the pom poms and the megaphone going. You will do this in. We got screwed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, is there a time and a place for it? Sure. Um, but Absolutely. just because you know. Just remember, Batman did his best work in uh, in the back of 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 a, of, a, of a cave, and no one saw what he was doing. Right, so right. <laughs> and t- until he comes out and just you know screws the royally screws the pooch on something, I think I think we need to have the dudes back. And 100%. Um, you know he's he's keeping us he's keeping us relevant. And he's keeping us in the conversation and a lot of things. And, and there's a lot to be proud of as, as an NC State fan. Now, 
do we want more? Of season. course we do. We're fans. We want more. Yeah. Well, but, because, yeah, because none of those 4 AC titles are in right. the major the three sports. with baseball, mm-hmm. men's basketball, football. We get yeah. that. Yeah. But but I'm also yeah. saying football, men's basketball, baseball, are we moving in the right direction? He's I would say investing, so. 100%. Investing in all of them. I yeah, mean, we're investing. We're making the right moves. Here's the other thing that you didn't really talk about when he was navigating. He was navigating through an NCAA investigation, too, in men's basketball. Yeah. You know, and right. we got off pretty light, all things considered, well, that could have happened. So he's yep. doing what he needs to do. Yep. He got us in the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which Absolutely. that has been, because I, I will say, so like literally this week, I uh, was had the awesome job of staining my fence, which uh, takes forever. Oh. And so literally for the first time, I had to find like some podcasts to listen to. I mean, listen to like Adam and Gold and mm-hmm. Julio and Ovi, you know, talk about, your conference three line in the Magnificent Seven. God, that was hilarious. That was like, where did this guy come up with the name Magnificent Seven? He pulled it out of made his it up. Butt. No, yeah, that's a movie. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, a movie. Well, well, but well, but again, it yeah. wasn't the teams that said we are the Magnificent Seven. Oh, it was yeah. the one reporter saying, We're gonna call these guys the he Magnificent Seven. Them. But again, so, he pulled it from a yeah. movie, like it wasn't yeah, something that came yeah. up original. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um and uh, Carson brings into talking about when it came when it came to the bowl game, men's and yeah. women's basketball tournament and uh, baseball tournament that only other AC team do it was Duke. Uh, once again, salutes uh, from what we've heard. No, nothing that we've heard in terms of Sam Highfield and Willison. Yeah. They should that's be good Twitter to go. Fodder. Um, yeah, that's Twitter thought. Yep. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about before we wrap this up, got to give a huge shout out to yeah. our now pack pro Diana Schneider from women's tennis, uh, who per Simon Ershaw, the, the head coach of women's tennis said, uh, she, Diana Schneider becomes the first active college player this century, if not longer to go directly from NCAA tennis, uh, to a, a major, uh, a tennis draw and play in the singles main draw and win her for opening round match, uh, so again, I mean, just I mean, just think about that. So I mean, she really went from basically a week ago playing UNC in the NCAA finals, and then getting on a plane, flying to Paris, and then mm-hmm. winning her first match against you know uh, one of the top uh, you know women's tennis players in the world, and yeah. winning uh, both sets to get there. So I mean, yeah. can't say enough. And it's and so it, exciting to see uh, somebody in, in the in the in the tennis world repping NC State. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah. At a completely different surface, too, right? Playing on yeah. clay and yeah. French Open, so. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and again, like, it, it, it's pretty obvious that Diana is definitely an NC State fan from even just being here a couple of months. So, uh, you know, excited to continue to support her and, uh, you know, be able to say, you know, maybe down the road that she could be one of our famous alumni, you know, and maybe kind of branch off of the normals, you know, Philip Rivers and, it's like, you know, we need some new blood, you know, we need some new, new names, you know, the Zach Alfnack is mm-hmm. like, okay, that's cool. But, you know, so yeah. Uh, Amanda B here saying Diana is going to be my new secret weapon in my WTA fan slam fantasy. I, I didn't even know this was a thing. That's I didn't awesome. know that was a thing either. Yep. I, I, I guess there is no limits to the world of fantasy sports, no. right? So not anymore. No, absolutely not. Well, all right. Wolfpack nation want to say thank you once again. Oh, one other thing I got to give a shout out because this just happened right before uh, we went live. Breaking uh, news. <laughs> Patrick Bailey mm-hmm. is that oh, yeah. guy, y'all. <laughs> Patrick Bailey is that dude. Like he has been absolutely phenomenal. I just put it in a tweet yeah. uh, right before we went live. But again, this guy's hitting 355 right now and 36 at bats. Uh, he has two home runs, 11 RBIs, a 657 slugging percentage. Uh, and again, there's no doubt that the Giants Twitter page alone is loving him. And so I, and, and everything we've heard from the Giants organization is that they're loving him. I mean, they have an older, you know, catcher. And I mean, looking at this guy who's a, a switch hitter, uh, I mean, there's no doubt either them or somebody will love to have them have him on on their MLB roster. I think he has solidified that, in my opinion. But yeah. just my two cents there. Uh, Anyway, y'all, well, thank you so much again. Uh, Benjamin uh, wraps up here saying, I've called it all along. I've told Cook for a month not to worry about that. We will make the regional and the AC tournament. See, Benjamin, that's why, I'm, that's why, that's why I like you again. You know, you're, you're saying it right here. You called it all along, which, you know, all right. Good for you. So what now that saying? we've made a regional, right? So we got it Friday, 1 p.m. 1 p.m. ACC yeah. network. AC network. I'm telling you right now, look, this is, this is my, this is my uh, my thing to Wolfpack Nation. If you hear it here right now, if you show up to this game 
or to South Carolina. I will buy you a beer or a soda if you're not old enough. But let's go make Columbia red, not that scarlet nonsense. Garnet. Garnet. I don't even know what they are. Garnet, whatever that is. They sold that from Florida State. But anyway, so let's go rock some red in Columbia. Let's go turn it into Doak South. Westish, I guess. Yeah. Um, and uh, let's go. Uh, let's go win a regional. Absolutely. Let's go make it happen. Let's have some fun here, and let's and let's make the best out of it. Hey, no pressure on us. Everything to gain, nothing to lose, and let's go make it happen. No. Let's go. All right, y'all. Well, thank you so much again for joining us. Really do appreciate it. First and foremost, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, and we would really, really appreciate that. It's free to do. And to make sure that you do not miss out on any of our new content. I know last week uh, we came out with some awesome, awesome episodes, which you haven't checked out that uh, with uh, Jaden Scott, our uh, our our new uh, running back uh, commit for football. Make sure you go check that out first and foremost. And we have some fun episodes coming out this week to kind of get you a little bit excited about football. And uh, so just again, make sure to stay tuned for that. And uh, if you haven't followed us already at Tuffy Talk Now on Twitter and Instagram, make sure to go do that. And if you enjoyed this conversation, please do us a big, big favor. Hit that like button. It's, it's again, simple, easy to do. And if you did like this conversation, just double click it uh, just to really make it very clear that you did not like this uh, conversation. We appreciate that as well. Greg and is Greg is ready, that, coach. Uh, Put very, me in. Oh, pack nine. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it done, baby. Thank you all so much for joining again. We really appreciate all of the support. Uh, thank you, Amanda, for joining the channel. Uh, we really appreciate it. And as always, go pack, y'all.